Plesiosaurus was about 4.5 meters, 15 feet long, with a broad, flat body and a relatively short tail. It swam by flapping its fins in the water, much as sea lions do today. The neck was long and flexible, capturing prey by using the long, sharp teeth present in the jaws. They thrived until their disappearance in the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event, roughly 66 million years ago. Plesiosaurs existed in oceans across the world, in European seas and around the Pacific Ocean, including Australia, North America, and Asia. Based on a largely European record from the first 20 million years of the Jurassic, plesiosaur diversification continued, and maximum body size gradually evolved to pre-extinction levels. Larger body size correlates with an increasingly macro-predatory lifestyle, feeding on other marine reptiles and some plesiosaurs. The iconic long neck became shorter and the skull very large. Tenistrophius? Tenistrophius lived in the Tethys Sea off the ancient supercontinent Pangaea, when all of the continents were joined together, during the Triassic period around 242 million years ago. Researchers identified these ancient marine reptiles from bizarre fossils located on what is now the border between Switzerland and Italy. They had weird broomstick-like necks that stretched to 10 feet, three times the length of their torsos. So not only were scientists unsure if these were land dwellers or marine animals, but they also didn't know if the smaller specimens were juveniles or even a separate species. To solve these two long-standing mysteries, Dr. Riepel and colleagues used newer technologies to see details of the animal's bones. The large Tanistrophius fossil's skulls had been crushed, but the researchers were able to take CT scans of the fossil slabs and generate 3D images of the bone fragments inside. The skulls had key features, including nostrils on top of the snout like a crocodile's, that suggested Tanistrophius lived in the water. Helicoprion. Helicoprion was a group of shark-like fish with a spiral jaw that made their teeth resemble the edge of a buzzsaw. They inhabited Earth's oceans from the Devonian period, 419.2 million to 358.9 million years ago, to the Triassic period, according to the Australian Museum. Fossil records indicate that these fish grew up to around 25 feet long, making them five feet longer than the largest known modern great white sharks, Carcharodon carcharius. Fossils of Helicoprion have been found across America, Australia, Asia, and Europe, indicating that it had a global distribution during the Permian. Alexander Karpinski named the first species H. Bessonoi in 1899. Karpinski, who invested a large portion of his life trying to understand the creature, also reassigned the first fossil to the Helicoprion genus. Helicoprion was shark-like in nature and appearance, meaning it was an apex aquatic predator of its time swimming through global oceans and preying on smaller animals. This fish didn't have any notable natural enemies or threats. Habelia? Habelia optata was more of a mini monster, with a body length of up to 1.6 inches, 4.1 centimeters. These tiny sea predators had helmet-like heads and creepy mouth appendages for catching and ripping apart their prey. H. optata fossils can be found in British Columbia, Canada and date back around 505 million years to the Cambrian period, 538.8 million to 485.4 million years ago, according to the Royal Ontario Museum. Among chelicerates are very familiar animals, spiders, scorpions, harvestmen, mites, and horseshoe crabs. They are united by a head bearing five pairs of legs and an anterior most pair of chelate appendages used to cut their food. These traits distinguish them from the other large group of modern arthropods, the mandibulate, such as shrimps, crabs, centipedes, or insects, which by contrast have sensorial antennae and modified head limbs assisting in food mastication. Lyrarapax. The Cambrian period also saw the reign of a claw-faced sea monster that was totally unlike anything swimming in our oceans today. Lyrarapax unguispinus was one of many bizarre arthropods that lived during the Cambrian period. It grew up to 3.2 feet one meter long, and had a claw-shaped appendage on the front of its head to grasp prey. This killer arthropod was one of the world's first apex predators. The fossil was found in a piece of 518-million-year-old shale in China's Yunnan province. Describing their discovery in National Science Review, an international team of paleontologists note that the fossil, which is nearly complete, measures just three-quarters of an inch, about 18 millimeters, long. The specimen is thus the smallest known radiodontan a group of arthropods that had circular mouths lined with teeth. 
The L. unguispinus baby boasted adult-like morphology, including the claw and mouth full of teeth, the study authors write. Mosasaurs. Mosasaurs may not be the strangest animals on this list, but they are certainly worthy of the name sea monster. Before they fell to the same fate as the non-avian dinosaurs, this group of marine reptiles roamed the world's oceans, chowing down on almost anything that moved, including other mosasaurs. A 2014 study in the journal Proceedings of the Zoological Institute RAS estimated that Mosasaurus hoffmani grew to be around 56 feet, 17 meters long. It was also the largest carnivore of its day. This real-life leviathan preyed on huge turtles, sharks in the shallow Maastricht seas. When the Mesozoic era came to an end 66 million years ago, Mosasaurus and its fellow Mosasaurs were the last of a relatively brief yet highly successful dynasty that ruled the seas during the last 25 million years of the Cretaceous. Many of the earliest Mosasaur fossils were discovered in South Dakota. It's possible that the first Mosasaur discovery of the West was made by Lewis and Clark in Gregory County, just 200 miles from the Badlands. In Badlands National Park, Mosasaur fossils have been found in the Pierre Shale, a rock unit laid down in the Western Interior Seaway roughly 75 to 69 million years ago. Placodonts. Placodonts were peculiar mollusk-eating marine reptiles known only from the Triassic of Europe and the Middle East, looking something like a cross between a walrus and a turtle, and were first discovered by Georg Münster in 1830. Seeking help from the great ichthyologist Louis Agassiz, Münster misidentified these teeth as those of pycnodont fishes and gave them the name Placodus. Richard Owen realized that Placodus represented a new group of reptiles, variously allied over the years with synapsids, ichthyosaurs, and areocelidans, Placodonts have proved to be strongly modified members of the Sauropteryngia, the position that was originally advocated for them when Owen created this group in 1860. No known placodont was large. Most are between one and two meters long, and the very largest forms may have reached three meters. Equipped with particularly dense bones and armor plates, like other bottom-feeding marine vertebrates, like plesiosaurs, sea cows, would have had no difficulty in remaining on the seafloor. Sea scorpions. Sea scorpions, or eurypterids, were a group of ocean-dwelling arthropods that resembled modern-day scorpions. What made them strange? Well, some were enormous compared with scorpions living today. For example, one eurypterid fossil found in New York is estimated to have come from a sea scorpion larger than a human. Members of this group could exceed 8 feet, 2.5 meters, according to the Yale Peabody Museum of Natural History in Connecticut. Sea scorpions terrorized the seas for more than 200 million years until they went extinct at the end of the Permian period, 298.9 million to 251.9 million years ago. Because giant sea scorpions' fossil record is largely based in the U.S. and Europe, Bicknell and his colleagues surmise they made quite a substantial trek of thousands of kilometers to end up in what is now Australia, where they were found fossilized with large fish and trilobites, most likely their dinner. Scientists don't know what killed off the once dominant Eurypterids, and Bicknell's research doesn't solve that mystery. But it may offer a starting point for further research. It may be environmental, it may be ecological, so they're sort of competing with different animals. Or they may have just pushed themselves too far, and that resulted in their extinction, Bicknell said. That's sort of an open question. So which one of these monsters you like the most? Leave a comment. See you next time.